Hi everybody, Father Bill Holtzinger here, and this is your Friday Reflection. And I'm at the Oregon Star Party. You can see the little sign right there, Oregon Star Party. And I've been away for my vacation, doing this mostly. Again, I apologize for wind. It's windy out here in the Ochoco National Forest. We're at about 5,000 foot level. And I'm walking through a field, a desert field, but it's not just any field. It's a field of telescopes. There you go. Field of dreams for many. In this field, there are scopes that have been handmade, some that are old, uh, some are classics like here. This is a classic mount of a telescope here. Right there, it's a classic mount looking German equatorial mount. Uh, some are reflectors. Here is a refractor here coming up here. I'll show you this refractor. I want to make sure you can see this, not looking straight into the sun. So this is a, a Skywatcher reflector. So light comes from the top and goes straight down into a camera in this case. And then you have a homemade telescope. And this is a reflector, a Dobsonian mounted reflector. There you are. I have one of those uh, about the same size. I didn't bring it with me. I have a, it's called a, uh, a RASA. Uh, it's an acronym for a special kind of telescope. But uh, and maybe we'll see one here. Maybe I'll get back to my camping spot so you can see one of those as well. But as I'm walking, here's another while uh, we're standing here, here's another, that's another reflector, a Dobsonian mounted reflector. Uh, there's a beautiful view here. I'm going to stand around here and you can see this, uh, the great background here. We're on top of a mountain, a mountain, but it's 5,000 feet. But it's great. We have wonderful views. You can see that uh, there's lots of telescopes and people bring their RVs. Some are small, some are big, some are just tents. And uh, lots of different people from different walks of life. And here's an example of a telescope that is, uh, the mount is a very, very expensive mount and the scope is being covered because it's very hot out. Right now, let's take a look if I can walk around it. If we can get a sense, okay, this is a, they call it a Schmidt Cassegrain telescope, which can be adapted. Basically light comes in here. I'll go around here. Light comes in here, bounces on a mirror, bounces another mirror at the top, and then goes all the way to the back for the person looking on the, to the eyepiece. Uh, anyhow, this is a, a great field of telescopes. And because of the wind and the heat, and again, I apologize for the heat or the wind if it's bothering, but people will cover up their scopes like this one. And you'll see that over here as I move around again. Another one here. Just a lot, a lot of them covered up for dust and other things. So this has been on hold for several years and it's great to have it back. COVID struck it down in a couple of years. One other time was fire danger. Another one was the roads were not in good repair. So as we uh, are able to return back to normal, I'm very, very thankful. Which reminds me of the parable in the Gospel of Mark where the kingdom of God is like a, a treasure buried in a field. In that buried field, what is it? Well, of course, it's the kingdom of God. But in our own lives, there are lots of things that we may have that are gifts that God has given us that we just bury. What are those things? What gifts have you been given or have been given that sometimes we just, no, I can't do that. I'm not good enough. I think that's worth uh, asking the question. It's a tough question. In the background, there's generators going on here. Here's a set of telescopes here, a party here. They really, uh, there you go, so more here. And because we're all dry camping, we have to use all kinds of up, you know, things for, for power, solar power, things like that. In the first kings today, or first kings during this weekend's mass, we hear about how God asked Solomon for anything. Ask anything you want. Oh, that would be amazing. What would you, what would you say if you were asked to answer that question? What do you want? Anything. You. 
ask something for yourself. This is something you need. Maybe there's something that other people need from you. And of course, that's kind of what we hear from Solomon. He doesn't ask anything for himself. He asks for, for an understanding heart. An understanding heart so that he can be a ruler that judges and could be a good enough ruler for God. And, and of course, in the, the progeny of his father, King David. So we have then lots of questions, I think, and I do for me. What is it that I'm buried? What treasure in my life is being buried? What, uh, what gift of faith am I not putting into action? What's buried in a field of my desires that God has put in there? What things are in in my life that he wants me to do. And God's not pushy, he's just asking. And he's hoping for us to answer in a way that will be for others. Love God and love our neighbor. Not just for ourselves. Again, it doesn't mean that, for example, you can't have hobbies and you can't have property, you can't have uh, a telescope, let's say. But if it's all just for yourself, if it's all for just for me, then there's a problem. I think we'll find, and for those of us uh, who have gone down some of the road of difficulty, that the more we heap on ourselves, the more we give to ourselves. And it's not that we shouldn't love each other, ourselves, we should. But if all we're doing is that, it can become narcissism. That we're called from that place of love to then give back. Give back to God and give back to God's people. Have we buried that? We're, we're in the middle of summer. Fall's going to be coming up. I want you to think about the ministries at Holy Trinity, what maybe God is asking you to do. Maybe, maybe you can be a reader. Maybe you've uh, been putting that off. This is your year. Maybe a Eucharistic minister, extraordinary minister of Holy Communion, or a homebound minister, or if, you're, if you'd like to be an altar server, young and old. Uh, what is it? What would you be? What, you, what is God asking you to do kind of locally? This is the time to think about that. I mentioned, take God with you when you go on your vacation. Well, okay, good. So we're on vacation, myself included. In my case, I, as I peer through telescopes, I'm asking, so what am I looking for? When I look up into the stars, I'm just profoundly moved by the immensity of everything, the galaxy. It's just too hard to comprehend. The, the galaxy, you can see the actual galaxy. You can't see it very well in, in Beaverton, but you can certainly see it well here at 5,000 feet in the Ochoco National Forest at about an hour and a half, maybe or so southwest of, or southeast of Brineville. And I think there's 100 billion galaxies. There's 100 billion stars in our galaxy. There's 100 billion galaxies. And that's our estimate, right? God has done all that. If God has done all that, he can do great things through you. So ponder on these things. When you come to Mass, that I mentioned that the first readings from First Kings, the Gospels from Mark, and Deacon Brett will be preaching. And I don't know what he's preaching about. I'll be coming in uh, right out of uh, my vacation, right into the weekend. And I look forward to seeing you all. I'll see you this weekend. God bless. Bye-bye.